Hey Foundry Groups, it is good to be with you again this week. A uh, quick announcement before we jump into content. I want to let you know that we have got a service opportunity that the Foundry and specifically Groups has partnered with uh, over the last few years. Um, and it's hand to hand. And we have asked Groups over the last few years to make the snack packs for this organization. They do a great job getting into the schools and making sure that kids have enough food, not only at school, but even to take home um, when after school is done. So we would love it if your group would like to partner with us. We ask that groups uh, purchase the snacks and then pack them and then bring them into church and we make sure it gets into the hands of the schools for them to distribute there. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, feel free to reach out to us at uh, info at foundrychurch.net and they'll get it into our inbox from there. But we'd love if you guys again this year uh, took on the reins for helping with our hand-to-hand -hand snack packs. So. For this week, we looked at the prophet Ezekiel and the story and the, the calling he had in his life to speak a word of wisdom to the southern kingdom of Judah. Um, specifically in Ezekiel's book, we actually know that Ezekiel has one of the most, um, it's the most historically significant, one of the most historically significant books primarily because it has so many dates. We can actually pinpoint a lot of things in the Old Testament because of uh, all the dates that Ezekiel gives. So it's really, it's, it's a great historical book to even look back to. But outside of that, um, what we know is that because of these dates, we know his word of wisdom to the people actually leads us up to um, when Judas fall fall to Babylon in 586 BC. So because of all those dates, we can see that, that this very book leads up to the fall of Israel. Um, and what's interesting about Ezekiel is his visions. And if you've read along with us over the course of the last week, you know the visions that Ezekiel has are are even just hard to describe. And I think Ezekiel does the best that he can to describe the heavenly things that God is allowing him to see. I, For me, it's easy to think that, you know, if we took Ben Franklin, for example, and we sat him down in an IMAX theater and showed him Star Wars and then sent him back to his day and age and said, describe what you've seen, right? The people he's talking to would be like, what? And I think sometimes we get that kind of an image in this. We think, I don't even know what he's trying to say. And that could be really true because we haven't seen what Ezekiel has seen. Right? We don't know what that exactly looks like. So take, take his visions and understand he is probably trying to describe something that our minds may not even be able to comprehend. So just take that with a grain of salt. He's seeing these very things, but maybe having a hard time putting these down on paper for our ears and our eyes to see. Uh, but what we know and what we, what we heard this weekend is that the message of the gospel is hidden in Ezekiel and the words that Ezekiel is saying, the gospel is hidden in those things. But we know that sin must be punished, that sin has to be punished in some way. But God does not delight in punishing his children. Sometimes uh, there's a perception of God that he enjoys that. Uh, but Ezekiel makes it very clear. God does not delight in punishing his children, but sin still has to be punished in some way. And it's also important to note that God hates death too. God hates death too. Um, in the powerful story of the pile of bones coming to life, the, the valley of dry bones that we read about in Ezekiel, we're reminded that God is actually the God of new life. He's the, the healer, the ultimate God of new life. And God will breathe new life into dry bones so that people will know that he is Lord. Um, and I just love this imagery that we get out of Ezekiel and the promise that we serve a God that breathes new life into things constantly. And we can take that into our world today and think that, you know, there are things that are in our life that are super dead, right? There, there are things that need to be relived into and new breath 
spoke into parts of our lives and God can do those very things. So I'm excited for the content for you guys today. Uh, we are going to be jumping right into the questions, so hang on tight. Let's start with an icebreaker question and thinking about the Valley of Dry Bones, just signifying bones, how many of you have ever broken a bone? I personally have never. I probably should have multiple times. I've gotten quite lucky in that, but I think it's because I've drank so much milk. It makes my strong bones, right? How many of you have ever broken a bone? Who has, who hasn't? And if you have, what did you do? Is there a fun story like you went out to Spain and you got chased by a bull and all of a sudden? Tell, tell your story about breaking bones. All right, spend a few minutes as a group and read Ezekiel 2, 3 through 6, and then also Ezekiel 3, 17 through 21. What stands out to you about Ezekiel's call? Now describe a time in your life when you obeyed God and were met with briars, thorns, and scorpions. Next, I want you guys to start out by reading Ezekiel 33, 10 through 11. We talked about in the message over the course of this weekend that God hates death too. Um, is that something that you agree with? Do you believe that God hates death? And from that answer, how does that make you feel? And what does it make you think? Next, spend a few moments reading from Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Maybe there was a time in your life where you felt like you had a heart of stone. Maybe this was before you came, became a believer. Maybe it was just a hard time in your life when you were just short and mean with people, right? What were you like when you had a heart of stone? And how is a heart of flesh different? In the message, we talked about the Valley of Dry Bones. Has someone, have someone in your group reread that or maybe just re-explain what that Valley of Dry Bones is and then ask this question, where in your life are there dry bones? And from your answer there, do you actually feel like those things can be rejuvenated again? Do you think new life can be brought into those things? And if you do, how can that look? Like, what do you think God can actually do with those? And if you don't, maybe reread this story again, right? Because we serve a God who breathe, breathe, the, the imagery that we get out of this story proves just that God can breathe new life into things that can seem so very dead. So take some time, reread that story if you need to, but look at can these dry bones live and what might need to happen in your life to see that happen.
All right, that is it for our normal questions. Well, I want to explain digging deeper in just a minute here, but I want to remind you, leaders, if you're in the room, take out your phones. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to make an event for this uh, group session that you just met with, and take attendance. We love to know who's uh, who's with us in groups and we love to make sure that we're able to care for you guys better uh, by knowing who is in attendance. Uh, if you've got some time, if you want to jump a little bit deeper, we are looking at Ezekiel 34 and comparing it with John 10 because there's some imagery in both of those uh, chapters that speak about a shepherd. And we're going to compare what the shepherd means in both of those different things. So if you've got some time, take a look at those verses um, and the content on the page. You can feel free to take a closer look at that. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great week and we will talk to you soon.